Democratic Congressman Jim Himes of Connecticut. He's on the House Intelligence Committee. Congressman, yesterday, uh, your colleague, the top Democrat on your committee, Congressman Adam Schiff, joined me here in the Situation Room, and he explained his deep fears that Republicans will shut down your committee's entire investigation into the Russia probe and eventually take aim at the special counsel's investigation as well. Do you share those fears? Uh, I do. And those are two separate things. Uh, you know, uh, as Adam, I think, probably told you on uh, Monday, we have three wit uh, witness uh, um, uh, depositions scheduled in such a way that uh, the various investigators will be spread thin across three different uh, interviews. Many of the interviews or some of the interviews have been conducted without our having the documents that we have requested. Uh, there have we there have, there's probably 10 plus witnesses that we have requested to speak to people who would potentially have have knowledge of, of the topics we're investigating that have not yet been scheduled. So yeah, I'm terribly concerned. And in concert with the president, and not just the president, but Sean Hannity, Janine Pirro, uh, the president's allies in the uh, Congress, uh, attempt to delegitimize the FBI to suggest that a man like Bob Mueller, an American war hero, the finest FBI director the country has arguably had, to throw mud on that investigation so that, it, so that the option opens to end that investigation uh, is a profound profoundly concerning thing. Congressman Schiff also said that there were, in his words, very credible allegations that the Russians were laundering money through the Trump organization. Do you agree? Well, well if I don't one of the ways we preserve this investigation is by not getting out of, ahead of what possible conclusions could be. There are questions about uh, financial transactions. There are questions um, about uh, the Trump Organization's interactions with various banks, where they got their credit, where they got the money. Real estate, of course, is a business where people can park cash in things like hard assets in homes and apartments. But uh, but look, this is this is something that is properly uh, to be investigated by Bob Mueller, uh, not so much the Congress. Remember. We're about the Russian hack. We're about whether there was collusion, about the nature of leaks. Um, but this is something that you wouldn't want to foreclose as a possibility before Bob Mueller is in a position to go out there and say, here's what I found. Congressman Schiff also said the Republican leadership of your committee has prevented you from subpoenaing uh, Trump Organization back rec bank records. Why is that? Well, there's, <laughs> there's, been, uh, there's been fights, uh, and it's not only been with the Republican majority. You know, it has been with the actual witnesses themselves on the terms on which they will provide information. Uh, remember, uh, everything from, yes, there have been instances where the majority has pushed back. But then, of course, as you'll recall, the president's son, Don Jr., this was widely reported, uh, decided he was going to claim uh, attorney-client privilege in answering questions about conversations that he had with his father, despite the fact that there really is no attorney-client cl privilege when you're speaking with your father, even if there are lawyers in the room, and despite the fact that Congress traditionally has not um, acknowledged uh, attorney-client privilege or any other privilege in its investigation. So yes, it is fair to say um, that in addition to the fear that this uh, investigation at the probably desire of the president is at risk of being wrapped up before we can finish off our work, uh, it is also true that there have been any number of speed bumps along the way in terms of getting the answers we need. And again, without in any way prejudicing our conclusions, you got to ask yourself, why? If everything is hunky-dory, if there is no wrongdoing, if everybody is innocent, why isn't everybody cooperating to get the information out in a timely, prudent, and, uh, and effective way? You, you think these uh, attacks uh, on the FBI, on Mueller, on the Justice Department uh, are coordinated between the, the White House and, and uh, let's say, some, uh, some on Fox News and others in the, uh, the right-wing media? Look, no question. And, you know, whether, whether there's a hotline between uh, the Oval Office and, and, and Fox News, I, I, I doubt that's true. But when the president is talking about the investigation and makes it very clear he wants them over and uses the words, do something, uh, you know, people who will sell their souls, who will trade their integrity, who will betray their positions of trust in favor of supporting this man and why you would choose to do that, I, I, I do not know, uh, will do precisely that. And again, you know, people like Sean Hannity, who are throwing mud on the FBI, Janine Pirro, some of my colleagues. Can you imagine if Barack Obama had attacked the FBI, the protests in the streets we would have seen, the indictments, the investigations? And look, at the end of the day, Wolf, our, whatever you think of the president, uh, when judges are, are attacked for their ethnicity, uh, when, the, when the media, uh, something that is uh, annoying to politicians but essential to our democracy, is attacked by the president of the United States, our democracy is at risk. And the FBI, look, the FBI has a 
storied history. They haven't always done exactly the right thing. But when you are attacking the mechanism of justice of the United States of America, you are setting this country up for a place where no facts are true or false. Anybody can get away with any behavior at all. Uh, and we will have something that does not look in any way, shape, or form like the democracy that has been such a gift to all of us for a long period of time. You know, the president uh, did say today, uh, as he was leaving uh, the White House uh, on the South Lawn, he said about the FBI, what they've done is very, very disgraceful, and you have a lot of angry people that are seeing it. It's a very sad thing to watch. That was the president himself. But just a little while ago, the Attorney General of the United States, Jeff Sessions, was asked whether he would appoint a second special counsel to investigate uh, the current special counsel investigation. And he gave a long answer detailing all the ways he says the Justice Department has been responsive to criticism and congressional oversight. And then Sessions said this. Listen. We intend to monitor our people to maintain high standards. But I got to tell you, sometimes things that might appear to be bad in the press have more innocent explanations. And so fairness and justice is also, uh, should also be provided to our personnel. You have confidence that the Attorney General will let the Mueller investigation play out free of any outside influence? I guess I would be looking, considering what's at stake here, Wolf, for a somewhat more vigorous, more manly support of the organization and the good people that work for him than I heard from Jeff Sessions. The president saying the FBI is in tatters, criticizing that organization is an abomination, Wolf. If I'm a little fired up about this, it's because I have formal oversight of the FBI as a member of the Intelligence Committee. I'm never shy about saying, I think you might have done this wrong, you may have overstepped. But I work with these people day in and day out. They risk their lives every single day. There's a reason they carry weapons. They could be making a lot more money elsewhere. This organization is not in tatters. It is the finest law enforcement organization on the planet, and it is time for Jeff Sessions, it is time for others to stand up against this president and say, sir, you do not get to challenge storied, landmark, cornerstone institutions in the United States of America. That's what I want to hear from the Attorney General. President Trump uh, today didn't rule out uh, a possible pardon of his fired national security advisor, Michael Flynn. Flynn, of course, is not cooperating with the Mueller investigation. He pleaded guilty. Uh, so what signal is the president sending to Flynn? Well... <laughs> Let me, let, let me be a little less hard on this president. One thing we know about him is that certainly on the fly, it's not clear that he's particularly considered in the words that he uses. So I'm not convinced necessarily that he was trying to signal anything to Michael Flynn. Uh, who knows what, uh, what, what he meant. Um, but obviously the effect of his words, let's not talk about a pardon yet. That word yet suggests that there is a conversation to happen down the road. Look, Michael Flynn's not, a, not an idiot. He knows that the possibility of presidential pardon is always out there. But it is. Again, it is. It it is an ongoing effort by the president to, and I don't use this in its legal sense of the word, I use it in sort of the common sense uh, word, it is to obstruct this investigation, to, uh, uh, you know, to send a hint maybe that uh, if Flynn, who presumably, by the way, is cooperating uh, with this investigation, that maybe, you know, if you don't, if you don't feel like cooperating and, and, and you know, the, the Department of Justice comes down hard on you maybe, you, maybe you walk away. So again, I don't know what the president meant, but it certainly was not useful to all of our cause, which is finding out what happened happened there and to the president's cause of presumably proving his innocence. Yeah, he said not yet uh, when he was asked if he was considering a pardon. He used the word yet, uh, which some saw as very significant. Congressman Jim Himes, thanks very much for joining us. Thank you, Wolf.